let's move uh, into masks. Again, I hope I've clarified enough tonight uh, that this is something that we're going to be very, very strongly recommending uh, to the general public. You really need to do it to protect uh, one another. And this is something in businesses uh, for employees uh, that is going to be uh, mandatory because you can't bring people together uh, in that area safely, um, depending on the settings, without it. Now, if, if you're sitting alone in your office with the door closed, that might be one thing. But remember, these congregate settings, it's really important to stop the, the spread. So um, uh, what we're going to do is watch a quick video because some folks have said, well, where can I buy a mask? It's really easy to make one. I mean, we're talking about cloth masks, not surgical masks, or N95 masks for folks. And after the video, I'm going to ask Dr. Stack to come up show us a little bit about how to fit them, and also for him to talk about from his perspective why they're so important. Hello, Team Kentucky. My name is Andrea Flincham, and I'm the manager of the Healthcare Associated Infection Antibiotic Resistance Prevention Program at the Kentucky Department for Public Health. And I'm here today to show you how to make a mask out of some common household items that, that most of us will have around the house. These masks are worn when we make essential trips away from home, like the grocery store or the drug store. Um, and so we're going to get started now. I have a bandana here. You can use a bandana or any kind of scarf. Lay it out flat in front of you. And the other thing that you're going to need are two rubber bands. And that's it. So we'll get started. You make the first fold, and you're going to fold the scarf over to the center. Make the second fold to meet it right at the center and then carefully flip it over. It doesn't come out perfect, but that's okay. Fold, get that. Then make your second fold like that. Smooth it out. Flip it over. Now we're ready for our ear loops. That's what the rubber bands are for. You can use uh, ponytail holders, um, hair bands. Uh, sometimes the hair bands are a little tight around your ears. I like the rubber bands, well, well used rubber bands work well. Last folds, you're going to bring these over to the center, pull this out just a little bit, and we have a mask. And this is for you to wear on your essential outings. Remember, cover your nose and your mouth and wash this daily. Thank you so much and stay healthy. All righty, everyone. So thank you to Andrea for showing us how to do that. I have a little quick show and tell. This is what an N95 looks like. This is not something you should be wearing out in public. These are for healthcare providers. So don't wear this out in public. Leave these for the healthcare providers so they can be safe when they're treating you in the healthcare setting. This is an imitation N95. And this may look like a painter's mask or something you're familiar with. This too, you don't need to wear out in public. Leave these for people who are gonna work on your house or for other people who need them for those purposes. This is a KN95. These the FDA said people could use, um, but they're really knockoff kind of things. These are similarly good to a regular hospital surgical mask, but they're really not as good as the N95 because they don't fit properly in the end. But like everything else, they have these little ear things goes over your face like this. You don't need to wear these in public either. Um, these the healthcare providers can use. This is a procedural mask. You'll see these in the hospitals and in the doctor's offices. The healthcare workers will probably commonly be wearing things that look like this. They're often yellow. This one happens to be blue. Again, they're very same, uh, same construct as all the other ones. They're just elastic here, goes over the face. Um, these are the kind of things you should use. These, or if you want to show Kentucky spirit, the one the governor has, it says Kentucky on it, things like that. Um, you can do a bandana like Andrea showed you how to make at home into a mask, and it just requires a bandana and rubber bands. Or these, which a lot of people can probably sew or, or make in the community. And I think this would be a great time to show Kentucky spirit 
for Team Kentucky Spirit and for other people to express yourself in all sorts of ways with the ways you can get fabric and materials and make masks. Um, this one is made by the Department of Corrections uh, here, and so thank you to the Department of Corrections and the inmates who have made these. They do a wonderful job and produce them daily and will keep them in production for quite a long time. So they too can contribute to Team Kentucky and help us stay safe. And this one is one that the mother of one of our uh, staff members at the Department of Public Health made for me. So I'll use this one to demonstrate. It was a gift and your thank your card is in the mail. So when you do these things, you wanna make sure you, the inside is the inside and the outside is the outside. If you keep flipping inside to outside, you're gonna take your germs and put them on one side and then turn it around and put them right on the outside. So remember, maybe even label it if they're, not, if they're the same appearance, which side's the inside. When you wear these things, and it's hard because I'm talking to you in a television camera here, when you wear these, it has to cover your nose and go beneath your mouth, like this. It should cover your nose and cover your mouth. Ideally, it should go beneath your chin. Next level ones, if you're able to, when you make these, you can put a pipe cleaner or something flexible in here so it can mold. So if you have glasses like I do, it helps to minimize the fogging on this. A few more words about masks. Remember, the governor has been very clear about this. From a purely public health standpoint, we would prefer everybody stay healthy at home right now. We would rather you weren't out and about interacting with each other because we still don't have a vaccine and we won't in 2020. It'll be next year before we have a vaccine and we still don't have any specific treatment for coronavirus. So until we get specific treatments or we get a vaccine, the only way we have to keep you safe is to keep you from spreading the infection uh, among each other. But since society has to be able to get back to certain activities, and since there are a lot of other uh, considerations to uh, take into account, we're going to start letting you resume some activities. And the governor will announce that in a staged and controlled manner over a period of time, starting first with healthcare and then with other industries. By wearing a mask like this, you do a number of things. One, if you have the infection, whether you know it or not, because remember, Quite a few people can be infected and have no symptoms. Your secretions will stay on the inside of the mask instead of spewing forth in the air and you will help protect other people. That is the single biggest reason we are doing this, is to help prevent people from spreading infection to others. On the other hand, the second point, it is a visible reminder that social distancing is absolutely essential. So whether you're wearing a mask or not, out in public, if you are, you should still keep a six foot or more distance between yourself and other people. If you walk into a group and five people are wearing a mask and one person is not, you should all probably add a few extra feet to your distance and stay away from them a little further because everybody should be complying with this any time you come anywhere near someone. Um, and the final thing is there is probably some limited amount of benefit that someone else's secretions won't hit you and get in your nose and your mouth so it may help protect you a little bit. But the first two reasons, protecting others from you spreading infection to them and a visible reminder about the importance of hand hygiene and proper social distancing are probably two of the most important considerations. So thank you for doing this. It's really important and I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Governor.